The path to be built into a holy place, part six. My aromatic residence. Reverend Dr. Holly Namok Lee, United Methodist Church. Translator, Mrs. Irene Park. Reader, Mr. Jacob Lee. This video is made by Reverend Dr. Holly Namok Lee, who is a minister of the United Methodist Church. She got a degree of doctor in ministry at Claremont Theological Seminary in California. She is an executive director of Menowan Ministry. She carries a healing ministry. She is an author of 40 books and led 1,000 revival services and over 200 seminars for minister. Now she lives in California with her husband, Reverend Peter Yongtek Lee. She is the fourth daughter of Dr. Sung Bum Yun, former president of Methodist Theological University in Seoul, Korea. Today, we learn about the sanctuary from the Lord. Until now, we have learned concerning the vessels in the courtyard of the tabernacle. Today is the day to learn about the next four floors which belong to the truth. Before the lecture, God asked me, do you know what I hate the most? I'm not quite sure. There must be so many that it's difficult to pick just one. These are what I hate the most. Spiritually, denying me and not believing in me. Mentally, arrogance. Physically, lust and greed. Oh, I see. And we ought to be pure in all three areas. That's right. Unless you are holy and pure in the spirit, soul, and the body, I cannot go in to reside. Especially, be stink extremely. It is the stench of Satan. They have such foul smell. We have not experienced it, but you can distinguish by the smell. If Christ has a fragrance, Satan has a mal odor. If your spiritual sense of the smell is open, these will be easy to distinguish. When you expel the evil spirits, you must have noticed the stench of a sewage, rotten, fish smell, or foul odor. Do you think you could live happily in a house which smells like a pig pen? There ought to be a fragrant odor where I reside. I see. You reside at a place where there is fragrant aroma. Then, how could we build a house with such aroma? Do you remember when we talked about the aromatic fragrance from the Bible? Yes, I do remember when Mary broke the alabaster jar, the smell of the precious oil covered the whole house. The Lord told me to search through the Bible again, and I found out that fragrant aroma was related to all offerings, such as grain offerings, burnt offerings, which are all giving to the Lord. You shall receive them back from their hands and burn them on the altar as a burnt offering, as a sweet aroma before the Lord. It is an offering made by fire to the Lord. Exodus 29, verse 25. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Aphrodite the things sent from you a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. Philippians 4, verse 18. It was fascinating. I never knew the word fragrant aroma was used so many times in the Bible. For the first time, I began to pay attention to fragrant aromas. The spirit of revelation let me know that there is offering of fragrant sacrifices in the holy place and also the Lord stays where there is fragrant aroma and Satan emits foul smell. As a result, I found out that when our lives emit sweet aroma, the Lord resides in us. In the holy temple, the fragrant aroma was always going up. And I also remembered when kidneys were burnt. The Lord said it was such a sweet aroma. 
Aha, this was it. When the most sinful, dirtiest part is repented, burnt as an offering, there comes the aroma. Lord, how should we live to emit aroma from our lives? First, you ought to get rid of all of satanic stenches, that is the stench of the flesh, the smell of lust and greed. It is highly humanistic and worldly odor. At the soul level, it is the smell of arrogance and spiritually, it is the odor of unbelief. Once you get rid of these, you will emit fragrance. As I was listening to him, I got to think that maybe fragrant aroma is holiness and purity. Lord, wouldn't that be the aroma of holiness? Yes, you know, don't you? Each person has a unique smell. Some emit the smell of holiness and some don't. You can imagine how well I could distinguish the smell, can't you? You also know the fact that there is always the smell of frankincense in the holy place so that glad flies may not come close, don't you? Even though there is such bloodshed from the sacrifices, no bugs can come near the tabernacle. Lord, now I remember. In Psalm 23, the expression, you anoint my head with oil, seems to have the same purpose to keep the gadflies away. Whether it is a sheep or a person, the gadflies cannot come close to those who are anointed with oil. It is because of its peculiar scent, you must have such scent so that I can live in you and Satan cannot touch you. Wow, now everything makes sense, as if threading the beads. The reason for anointing ourselves with olive oil at our prayer meetings has become even clearer. Lord, thank you so much. You have made us realize the deep meaning of the rituals we use to perform without much thoughts. Now, then, let's talk about it seriously. As you go into the holy place, you will see the pure gold lampstand, the bread of the presence, ark of acacia wood, and the incense altar. When these are built in your heart, those are four more floors. What do you think is the characteristic of the ark of acacia wood? the pure gold lampstand, the bread of the present, and the incense altar. As the lust and greed crucified on the cross, they symbolize our death and Christ coming to life. That is a good answer. Humanistic lust and greed are crucified on the cross. And as I am revealed, the fragrant aroma covers all over. The procedure is to crucify everything that emits Satan's smell, die with me, resurrect with me, and your life will be transformed to emit my fragrance. Since you explained it so simply, now I can understand about the tabernacle 200%. I'm afraid I might have explained too complexly about building into a divine house. It was the same with Apostle Paul. If you approach the Bible from theological viewpoint, it is too difficult. But if you keep your focus on me and follow the steps to solve, everything will become easy. You have followed that step well for a while. The Bible is about me and the tabernacle is also about me. If you illuminate me as a person and explain about me, there is no roadblock in the Bible. But if you try to explain the Bible with theology and doctrine, it becomes too complicated and difficult to understand. Many pastors are wasting their energy because they have met theology and doctrine before they met me. Meet me first, then everything will be solved easily. The tabernacle, the salvation and healing. When you go into the holy place, you can see me. Everything you see, the pure gold lampstand, 
the bread of the present, the ark of acacia wood, the incense altar, they all symbolize me. That is because after the filth of oneself is managed, I am revealed. Acacia wood is not a nice looking tree, which has thorns in the roots and difficult to manage. But once it was managed, it became a holy vessel to be used in the holy temple. Gold was put on that wood and it became the holy ark of the covenant, table for the bread of the present and the walls of the holy place. You can no longer see its original appearance, which used to be coarse and wild. The gold lampstand is made of one talent of pure gold. It was made to form into a beautiful apricot tree, which illuminates the holy place. You cannot find the original shape of one talent of gold. As it became the light of the world and brightens the dark place, the light of life expels the darkness of the world. It is the same with the bread of the presence. First, the wheat chaff is removed. Grind it on a hand mill, kneaded with oil, baked at a high temperature, and finally become the bread of life, doesn't it? You cannot find the original form of wheat from the bread. But after going through such handling, it finally becomes the bread of life, which revives other people. All aromatic oils are also handled to be used at the incense altar so that the sweet aroma can be offered to God. No fragrance can come out of the flesh as is. But Lord, I do not understand why this is related to the stage of the truth. Good question. You were washed of your sins without any merit and came into the holy place. This holy place is where you must take care of all sins before entering the most holy place. Your external sins were taken care of at the courtyard of the tabernacle, but this is the place to sanctify your inner man, the place of internal holiness and purity. All your external issues, internal issues, and even the hidden issues of self-centered greed ought to be dealt with here. This is the place where you stand candidly before the truth, sanctify the inner man. Unless you stand before the truth, before me, you cannot see the sins. This is the stage of sanctification where you nail the lust and greed on the cross. Everybody has to stand before me and be dealt with. Now, this is where you die with me and be reborn with me as the new creation. Since this is the place to face the truth, take care of the inner sins, and finally experience the genuine freedom, it is related to, I am the truth. Then, Lord, once our outer man, lust and greed are dealt with, you appear before us and you can reside in us in the sweet aroma. Oh, how simple that is but there are so many pastors who struggle to understand the tabernacle all their lives. But to reach up to the stage of your appearance, isn't that a difficult journey, a journey of discipline one must go through? You speak it so easily, but some things just do not happen even in 60 years of lifetime. All of you tend to choose more difficult roads to follow. Do I really need to explain it? Since you avoid the cross everywhere, it is more difficult. It is not that the cross makes your life difficult, but life without the cross is like a derailed train trying to move on. I will explain once again why your faith life is so difficult. Why look for trouble in your faith life? The Lord promised to explain next time how to lead a simple, easy, and enjoyable faith life. Unmanageable faith life because we look for trouble. I think all of us ought to listen carefully. 
as I was listening to the Lord's lecture on the tabernacle, I remembered the scripture in Ecclesiastes. Truly, this only I have found, that God made man upright, but they have sought out many schemes. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 29. Humans are good at complicating simple and peaceful life. Then, Lord, I love to listen to your lecture on simple and easy road to life. Thank you. In Hebrew, menua is an adjective that describes being restful. We use the term menua as a noun. Please hit the subscribe button for Yunnamok TV, News from Heaven. Thank you for watching this video.